right, so I've got my Disco 4 here. It takes about a minute, but it comes up with the charging system fault. Um, just happened last night when I was driving down to the shops. So I checked the power steering fluid because I heard a whirring noise. And the next time I started it, I got the charging fault. I checked it already, it's not charging, but I'll just show you some diagnosis. So, it's definitely not charging. Um, and we've got 12 volts either side of this massive fuse. Now I'm gonna go down and check it um, at the alternator itself on the engine. Alright, so what I've done now is I couldn't get a cable right on the alternator because access is terrible but the power cable goes to the starter motor which is where the cable then comes from the alternator and then onto the uh, the inch block itself and just round that up here so I can check uh, make sure uh, first of all that we're well we definitely have 12 volts but we also have uh, no earth drop across the, the block between the engine and the battery and now we'll check for the voltage drop across the negative to the positive lead and it is about a half a volt but I mean there could be some loss through this cable and all these crimps and all that sort of stuff so I'm not worried about that and I couldn't get to the exciter, the exciter wire on the back of the alternator because the access is just shocking but I have confirmed that, uh, yeah, everything's spinning. The belt's on, the alternator is spinning. Um, I'll just have to jack it up and get to it that way. All right, turn my battery on charge and check the alternator fuse. Not even a spot for it. So obviously this is, uh, they got a fuse somewhere else or some sort of ECU controlled charging. I uh, definitely got to check that exciter wire make sure that it's exciting the alternator although that doesn't explain that whirring noise but anyway i still want to check it all make sure there's nothing else wrong with this there's always something tricky all right now i looked at going through here but take all this out and this pipe looks like it runs a long way back so i've just pulled this wheel liner out and this little panel here should make it a lot easier to get to seems to be the way to go i'm just going to pull this air valve out and pull the alt, see if I can get out this excitation wire. All right, I've pulled this valve out, come out with a bit of oil, made a bit of mess. Just plugging everything with rags. So I don't get any dirt in there. I don't even really know what this thing does, but it's got a broken clamp, so that's one bonus, I found that. Um, got in here and I pulled the belt off. The tension is right there, which is handy. Usually there's a hole you can put a, an Allen key or a pin in to keep it keep the tension off, but I just flip the belt off. And this has a one-way clutch in it, this pulley. So it um, put a screwdriver in there against a the little fan and made sure that it was locking up, but it's free one way, but driven the other. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be hard to get to the exciter wire and the, the positive terminal, but um, I think I'll just pull the whole thing out and check it there. While I'm here, this is one of the earths that can fail between the uh, chassis and the body. Uh, looks a bit rough, but it's all there. It's all right. I'll clean these, pull these off and clean these. These look like they've been off before. And I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, I just had one hell of a fight with this nut on this positive uh, lead to the battery. Should have mentioned that I disconnected the battery before I started mucking around with this. But look, this thing, it's been rounded before. And look at this, my spanner don't even want to fit over there, so I was fighting it the whole time, just trying to figure out what size it was, and ended up getting it loose like that. But mate, whoever put that back on needs a smack. Woo! Actually come out without too much struggle 
the exciter plug only has one pin uh, which is kind of weird because normally new cars have like three I pulled this little case off I was expecting to see something sort of blown or missing or damaged the slip rings aren't too bad the brushes still a bit of meat in there um, so yeah and then I didn't film it but I got a wire into that connector in here for the exciter and uh, yeah when the engines running or key on I think it's about 7.9 8 volts um, so I'm gonna go and have a look online and see what it should be I'd have assumed 12 volts especially if there's only one wire all right, apparently these Disco 4s, they don't just have a straight exciter wire. There's uh, an LIN signal that must come from, uh, I think it's got a battery monitor system on board, and that must be what controls the alternator. So, got one from the UK, come in about six days, and some seat belts too. Got shagged on the duty tax. There we go. Alright, I got the new alternator just sitting in there, plugged in the signal wire at the back, while I can still get my hand in there. Then I'll get this battery cable up if I can. Clean these earths. Cleaned all the nuts. What I've done differently this time is I've taken the starter cable off, right where it hits the starter motor. So I can get to the battery lead. There it is, right there. So if I ever take this off again, I'll do that. Take it off the starter, and then pull the alternator out to get to the nut. And there you go, battery cable on in one minute, instead of 10. That sort of pull this little boot back up and over the nut, and push the thing up in and put the bolts in. Okay, alternator's in, belt is on, valve is on, starter cables hooked back up, earth's on, I'm just going to hook the battery on and start it up and see if it's charging. There you go, that's all it was, just the alternator. That's the voltage drop between the starter cable and the battery positive terminal. If there was a problem there, you'd see a couple of volts, and that could be another cause for an alternator not charging. 